Hey folks, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at some custom amiibo, but first I wanted to thank everyone because we hit another milestone today. We hit, uh, actually not today, <laughs> a little while back we hit 50,000. I wasn't able to do the video, um, to make the video sooner because we were still feeling the after effects of COVID. And to be honest, these past few months have been a struggle. Uh, uh, recently my, my folks have had some issues, uh, some health issues. Uh, my dad with Parkinson's and my aunt, my mom is more recently with a laser eye surgery. And, um, my wife, uh, she, she got let go, uh, the day before our vacation. So things got on a, pretty much on a hall state on there, but I'm back again. And I really wanted to thank everybody for the support. Um, I've been very blessed to have such lovable people around me to keep going, such as my wife that has been pretty much the backbone of this channel. Um, she has helped me through and through again on multiple occasions for everything on the channel. Um, my loving parents and family and my friends who have supported my crazy ass hobby that I do, <laughs> you know, this is, uh, this is my hobby. This is my temp hobby. Um, I love Amiibo. I love figurines. So this is my... This is my go-to thing after work. So, and then you guys, um, thank you so much for you guys. Um, and I wanted, to, I, I wanted to thank you guys for for your continued support. And you guys on the community have continued supporting my channel. Uh, those that are new to the channel as well, uh, veterans of the channel, thank you so much. It really does mean a lot that we're here today, that we're still here, and that we're still going and showing our love and appreciation for these amazing little figurines. And there's more to come. And there's definitely more to come. Before, I used to think of myself, you know, I, I wouldn't reach these milestones, and I'm not going to be able to do that and everything like that. But with the support of everybody, you know, I pushed forward. We kept doing the things that we were doing. And I'm just going to keep pushing forward. You know, now that I have access to a friend's 3D printer, um, we're going to still make some more awesome Amiibo content, and we're going to be over here trying to make as much content for you guys as possible so thank you so much i really do appreciate everybody being part of this amazing community being part of something amazing and awesome that we all love so that said um we're gonna get started over here with some custom amiibo over here um i'm gonna go ahead and start i'm gonna pull our kind of our main course over here to the side uh, i'm gonna start with these three in the front over here because these three uh technically these two uh, was part of a youtube short that i did not too long ago but here is Sonic and Shadow, and these are figurines of a 2.5 um, inch line of toys from Jazzwares, I believe. Uh, my wife picked this up from Walmart, so these were pretty cool. And then the Amiibo bases themselves are actually the generic Amiibo base that I have 3D printed. But I wanted to do a little bit of spin on it, and before I was actually going to make this a gold ring. So before it was just going to be a blank Amiibo base but with a gold ring around it to symbolize the rings from Sonic. But my wife had an awesome idea to make this, excuse me, uh, green hill motif or emerald hill motif or pretty much any grassy green area that Sonic has in Sonic Sonic games um, of this checker plaid in, in the actual Smash logo, but still keeping the Smash logo in there. So, because these three amiibo are only ever going to be used in Super Smash Brothers, uh, with the exception, I think, of Tails and I guess Shadow in... Uh, Mario Kart 8, but that's only for a costume, and that's only one time, so, but yeah, that, that they get, she put the motif on there, and she did an amazing job on here, giving that checkerboard on there, pretty soon there's going to be a future project that I'm going to have her do a little checkerboard effect for an amiibo that I am not going to pay for, because it's a little bit more expensive, but that'll be a project going forward, <laughs> um, but that is Sonic, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the switch in the back over here really quick, now, and we're going to see that's a that's a Morton right there, actually. And you'll see Morton here in a sec. Morton is a work in progress that I'm doing. As Sonic scans as the orange uh, shoot Sonic with the orange armbands. And I chose that one because that was the closest or I remember, instance to the red shoes. But if there is a color that you guys prefer, uh, let me know in the comments below. And the color that gets the most comment on there will be the one that actually changes that, that will change the color of the sonic so and it can't be the black variation of sonic's outfit because shadow over here actually scans as such so you'll see here as soon as it zooms in shadow scans as the black variation of sonic on here for you i kind of wish that he had the red 
on his ha on his hair on there as well. Maybe one day I'll consider hacking the <laughs> Switch specifically only for Super Smash Brothers outfits, but uh, as of right now, not 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 yet. Definitely not yet. But yeah, Sa Shadow in the same motif. I am going to give him a Chaos Emerald as well. I'm just debating on the color and the material that I'm trying to use on it. If I actually want to use a real rock or if I want to use a, a piece of 3D printed uh, clear plastic and give it a shine myself. But we're having issues with the clear and I'll, I'll get to that in just a bit with you too. But there is Shadow for you. And then last but not least out of the three, uh, this is actually the reason why I needed to go run an errand on Thursday. Um of last week, or I guess today is Sunday, so yeah, last week, uh, was to make a base for this guy, because I was going to make the video a lot sooner, but I realized that I didn't have a base for Tails, so I needed to go print out a base for Tails, so I went to a friend, a buddy's house, and uh, I printed out from the 3D printer, I printed out the, the base for Tails on here, but same motif on there, and we got Tails. Um, this is now the Tails that will be the default because originally I had a Totaku figure that was the Tails, um, but he didn't have an amiibo base. He was just on the Totaku base, and he was kind of like a plus sign. So this will be the 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 go-to Tails that I will have. And I this it's nice because this hand right here is actually an open hand, and I actually wanted to see if I wanted to make a little alien ray gun for him and put it on there. So let me know in the comments below as well if I should really give Tails a gun or should I just leave him as is. Uh, there is one more zoom up of him as well. I didn't get to put him on the YouTube short, so I'll do a little 3D60 spin for you there. <laughs> so there he is. And I mentioned Alien Raygun on there is because uh, I show a little bit of work in progress ones here that I actually have as well. So this is the Vault Boy, the Me Gunner Vault Boy. And this is actually a 3D model of the Me Gunner itself. Um, and all the 3D models that you're going to see in the future on here, with the exception of the uh, the three in the back, um, actually all come from a place called the Model Resource. Actually, yeah, the three in the back over here. Or, I'm sorry, the two in the back over here, because these are also figures. Uh, the Zombie and the Enderman. Um, is from a website called the Model Resource. I'll put the link in the description down below. Uh, this is a community who has gathered uh, video game uh, 3D models for over the years for various consoles and have put them online for people to use them. And I've been using those models with a program called Blender and a, a 3D program called Blender and a 3D program called Maya to uh, help make these figures. So this is of the Vault Boy, and you can kind of see he's kind of a little bit bobbleheadish right now because this is a prototype print. This is the first time I printed this just as a test. Um, as you can see, it kind of, it didn't work out too well. His head is kind of, it came cracked because his support was inside of his head, so it kind of like just came off. The same thing kind of happened with his arm. His arm actually had a alien gun with it. I don't actually have the gun anymore. I don't think I do, but actually I do. Here, Here's the gun itself, so, and the arm. So you can kind of see it's all just kind of built. It's all just this muck of piece that's supporting everything, but... Yeah, he originally had his hand like that, so, and then this foot actually came cracked, so, but I wanted to keep this for two reasons. Uh, one, I wanted to test out this blue because I wanted to see if I could get a blue that's very similar to this blue, but just not as shiny, because as, as much as I like this figure, and this is a mystery minifigure from Funko that I, I currently use, this is, this is the Vault Boy that we currently use. Um, I, I didn't much care for the, the shininess to it, so I wanted something a little bit more dull just like the vault suit in Fallout itself. Um, but once again, this is just me testing out paint to see how it works, and this is without clear coat and everything, and me testing out, because he's also not as tall as I wanted him to be. I just kind of want him maybe a smidge taller, um, height-wise. Um, so I just wanted to, to test him out, and like his head is also kind of nearly headless Nick, where it's just not there. And I'll probably end up printing out another one of these when I get the time on there. Uh, the 3D printer, uh, my friend has a 3D printer uh, that was given to another friend of mine that we didn't know that it, it, if it worked or not, but he gave it to us for, for machine parts or anything like that. Uh, end of the day, we got it to work. Uh, I put some new firmware on there, and we got it to finally work and everything, so I've, we've been printing all from there. So it does take time to print these guys. It, it, it takes a little while to print from them, and then, of course, you know I'm not the only one using the printer, so I have to wait my turn and see what's being printed or everything. It's only one printer between a couple of us in the in a work studio so 
But this is one that's a work in progress. And the other reason why I wanted to have this and show this prototype on there is because I didn't really get to show you guys the steps on what I did um, with the ARMS Amiibo themselves. One of the biggest things I regret about these ARMS Amiibo is not the Amiibo itself. It was the progress of me going through, the work in progress of me going through and making these guys. Um, it was a very challenging task um, with some of the things that I did on here, such as the posing, because that was the very first time me messing with 3D printing, uh, how the arms were going to be displayed, how I was going to make this function, um, more so with Ninjara than anything else, because actually Ninjara uses, he's not, none of these guys are in a T-pose, and originally they are in a T-pose, and a T-pose is essentially a character that is just standing there in front with his arms kind of just side to side. Um, so I had to manipulate that and everything like that. So uh, showing the progress of these guys would have been really cool. It's something I really wish I had done, especially with the arms ones, considering, you know, the magnet effect on them to change out, you know, that for, let's say, you know, Springman wants a Slapamander now, or, you know, Springman wants a Megavolt now. Um, it was it was really cool to see all this stuff going through, me me actually making these things, but I didn't really shoot any progress ones and i'll be honest i didn't really shoot any progress ones with alf either which is kind of upsetting um so i'm doing this now with the vault boy so uh, so with that as well the vault boy is the only prototype that i have i have another one over here actually where did you go there you are uh, and this is professor layton so professor layton right now he is not a me fighter or he is a me fighter i custom uh made a me and then there are some outfits that make him look more like Layton. And uh, he is a me brawler, but he is not an amiibo as of yet. Uh, so once I finish him, uh, he will be an amiibo. And this will not be the final one. I kind of just made this one as well because we were trying to see quality. So there's these lines uh, trying to figure out what's going on with the quality of the print and seeing if I can make this better. So this is see all these detail on here this is actually from it laying down and i had to peel all of this off so i didn't really like the way that it looks so i'm trying different methods to see about smoothing and getting rid of all this lines and stuff right here using different methods and then um i've also this has all just been painted so the actual color is the one on the insider here that this has all been painted for me to try out different colors and everything this has been a test bed for me as well so but this is the Layton that will be there. And this is also from the model resources. Like I said, all of these are from the model resource. This specifically is from the Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright game. Uh, this is actually a trophy that you get in the game. And this is the 3D model for it. So I snagged it immediately. And it's like, oh man, that's that's a perfect amiibo. So hopefully in the future, this will be one of the two, him and the Vault Boy that will be coming out next. Uh, not necessarily a prototype, but at the same time, kind of a prototype until I find out. This was Morton, as you saw in the beginning of the video, uh, where Sonic on there. This is the Morton that I use right now, because before I used to have a little version of Morton from a capsule toy in Japan. And once the Koopa Kids started coming out as little figurines for the Jack specific figures of Super Mario line, like the Cat Mario that I've showed, or the Cat Luigi, the Cat Toad that I've showed in the past, the Fire Luigi. Um, and I believe I've shown the Koopa kids as well. Uh, they have not made a Morton, so I, I decided to take the model of the Morton from New Super Mario Brothers Wii and pretty much give him, uh, he came in, once again, that T-pose, so his arms were out here and his feet were a little bit together, so I gave him a little bit of posing there. Uh, I pr brought his arm down, brought this arm up, and then I'm going to print out a wand for him as well. So if the Morton does not come out in figure form, I, I I really do dig my own design of this Morton as well. And then he scales well with the other Koopa kids as well, because the other Koopa kids are just as tall as this one. And I scale them mostly based off of the Super Mario Amiibo and not the uh, Super Smash Brothers Amiibo, because Morton and the rest of the Koopa kids in Super Smash Brothers are about the same size as Bowser Jr., and not to say that Bowser Jr. is small, but he is smaller than Morton, Roy, and Iggy are in actual scale in Super Mario, in, in the world of Super Mario. So I scale them more along the lines of the Bowser amiibo and his other figures alongside of him. So I scale them alongside Roy, L uh, Ludwig, all the other taller ones, Iggy, and then found the perfect size for him. So, And then we still obviously have to draw the eyes for him, the little, his little star tattoo. We got to 
color in his mouth. Uh, all of the white is actually going to be a different color white because this is the actual just, you know, just white paint that's over here or just white primer. Um, but I do want to do like a bone white on him to make it look more like him. So yeah, this will be another work in progress for you guys on there. So, And then the last one is not necessarily also a work in progress, but this is kind of just a finalized version of a version one. Uh, this is from a fighting game that I'm not going to even try to pronounce, but also on the model resource. Uh, for the PlayStation 2, this is a Konami Super Smash Brothers esque fighting game that came out back in the 2000s. Uh, Bomberman was a character, Simon was a character, funny enough, Snake was a character, uh, Optimus Prime, a lot of different uh, Konami based characters. Um, Yugo from Bloody uh, Roar was in there. Uh, a lot of Hudson Soft as well, I should say. So Hudson Soft, Konami, um, they, they had a fighting game mashup um, with the Konami characters, and Bomberman was one of them. So I took the... What better way than to take the model of a Super Smash Brothers clone and put him in Super Smash Brothers? So this was the one that I, uh, that I chose for Bomberman uh, to make him an amiibo. And I don't, I don't mind his look um, at all. The only thing is these two little... You know, his eyebrows are not the ones from the newest version of of, of the of the Mii Fighter. So I, I might redo this, I'm, or I might, at the end of the day, I might keep this one, change the color of this one, and then make several other ones, depending on how I feel about making several Bomberman, on making more Bomberman for one of every color, because there is various uh, Bomberman amiibo. So there's that one on there. I'm going to take a look back at this guy, because we have seen him before. This is the Wii Fit Trainer. This was actually my first 3D print. Um, this was also uh, a trophy from Super Smash Bros. for 3DS and Wii U. So I took the trophy from that game and pretty much put it in the 3D file um, and just had to scale it around and, and print it, 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 which was super nice, because the, the, the model itself was exactly the trophy. So in the game, it looked exactly like this, because it, it didn't even have the base. Uh, just as as trophies had always had bases in in Super Smash Brothers history, so it was really nice to just take a trophy and pretty much make it into physical form. And he's not the only one that I did that with. Uh, before I started on Alf, I actually did a Shadow Mewtwo. So there's the Shadow Mewtwo. Um, this is also from Super Smash Brothers for 3DS and Wii U. This specifically one is for the 3DS version. And this is the Mewtwo Alt Trophy that you get for beating in, I believe, All-Star Mode? All-Star Mode? Classic Mode. I believe so. Um, because they have the Mewtwo Trophy, Mewtwo Alt, and Mewtwo's Final Smash, I chose the Mewtwo Alt. There's some rocks floating around with this uh, telekinesis on there. Um, but I really chose this one because of his stance. I thought it was really cool. It's very reminiscent of his taunt. So, And I really like that. It's just a powerful looking Mewtwo figure of him just floating on there and this I just used a clear I made a clear cylinder in blender and just kind of printed that in clear and just kind of put it under his tail on there and I have Mewtwo right here the original Mewtwo so you can kind of see them side by side it turned out absolutely amazing I love the color on it these lines are one of the things I am going to try to see in the, about in the future about uh smoothing them out a little bit more or seeing that there's another technique I can go about uh, smoothing them a lot more but uh, the overall figure I just absolutely love absolutely cool and then of course as with Sonic Shadow and Tails I'll go ahead and focus this right there and as you can see he scans as Shadow Mewtwo or in this case Dark Mewtwo just because uh, you can't put Shadow down because uh, 10, 10 letters are and the, the limit is 10 so so there is Shadow Mewtwo, um, and then once again, I'll show this off because we saw him in the beginning. There was Morton, so Morton gets scanned. And then last one on here, because we've already seen a Wii Fit Trainer get scanned, a Bomberman. So see what I mean? That the eyes are, they don't have these little eyebrows on there, so we'll see in the future. I might change that out. But And then the last one to scan, really, is this guy. I'm going to go ahead and scan him first so you can see. There aren't any controllers. Oh, it disconnected. Okay. Try that again. So there we go. So we got scanned there as Alf. And then I'm just going to kind of move that away really quick. Just so that way I can do this. 
And this is the newest one that I've made. This is ALF. Um, before I was actually using, I had mentioned in my videos before that I actually, what I do is there are certain amiibo that, and this is actually kind of loose now because I was using this as, this was ALF's original base. Um, or this was, I think this is a Koopa Link's original base. But I originally had a NFC chip right here, which is now currently an ALF, um, on this plate, and I would have it over this amiibo. This is the Pikmin amiibo that came out for Hey Pikmin, and this used to serve as my ALF amiibo, uh, because there is no ALF representation for Super Smash Brothers or Pikmin in general. So I went ahead and I glued, I didn't glue it, I just had this uh, kind of sticky tack on there, and I would just use that with a little bit of aluminum foil so it wouldn't contact this one, and I would scan this ALF on to Super Smash Brothers. So when everybody would ask for an ALF, this is actually what would show up. Um, and I've, I I do this with a lot of my Amiibo, a lot of things like Fire Emblem, uh, my Fire Emblem Amiibo that don't work on there, my Metroid Amiibo that don't work on there. Um, I use them as extra characters. So that way uh, we, we can actually have things. So like Violet, for an example, is my Tiki um, from the Fire Emblem series. And I currently have that on a base with one of these guys on there. So until I make my female Byleth, um, it will be that on there. So, and I'm I'm considering making my female Byleth sooner than later. So, and because now with with Alf, you know, and and with all these other amiibo, it, it, the possibilities for me are just endless now. So, I've been using these little bases as kind of like the just kind of like the in between for them to scan it on there. But finally. We can kind of set this guy for a side, and I, I am going to make a little custom on this, and I do love this amiibo. It's really cool. It shows all the little Pikmin on there, and it's thanks to this project right here, actually, is I'm going to do a little bit of modification to this one, because there's... Everybody's on here, but there's two Pikmin that are not represented that I purposely made on the other one, and that are not represented here on the Olimar one that I made with the other one on there, so... So let's get back into it. Uh, let's get back to ALF. So here is ALF. And once again, I used... This one was a little bit different because this one, I didn't use the 3D model from Super Smash Brothers. I actually used the Pikmin 3 models. So the Pikmin themselves and the model itself of ALF all come from Pikmin 3. And they, are all, they were all in T-poses and... Oh, actually, no... Yeah, no, the Pikmin themselves, the two Pikmin right here are from Pikmin 3. ALF is actually from Super Smash Brothers because ALF has this little, these little two flying Pikmin back here. And I used the one for Super Smash Brothers itself because of these two Pikmin now that I remember. Yeah, it's, it's, he's been a work in progress, so it's been a little, little while since I've done that, but I have him, there's his visor on there. So this visor is actually a clear ornament ball that we ordered and I had to cut the very bottom so you can see the seam in the middle right there. Um, just like the Olimar one, it's kind of sandwiched in together. So I had to do the exact same thing on there and that was a lot tougher than I had to do because the very bottom I never, I didn't realize it, and if I, if, if I ever re, were to redo this figure, I might do that. I might not put his arm so up, high up the way that it is, but I really wanted to because I really wanted him to point for the Pikmin, just like as if he's giving an order. Um, but yeah, if I, I think I'm going to lower down the arm next time because that does hinder the helmet, and I had to actually break more into the helmet to, to get to his head. Uh, if if I didn't have if if I didn't have that, uh, it would have been a lot easier to do that part on there. But and then I took the antenna. The antenna is actually just a little piece of three D filament that this whole figure was painted or uh, printed with. I just took that and painted it silver and gave him a little blue metallic bead on there, which was nice. Uh, the purple Pikmin is this one is a model from Pikmin three. Uh, he was a T-pose. The white Pikmin actually is in a T-pose still, so I kept that kind of kept them normal. So this is what they all look like when I say T-pose. They're kind of just all like this. Their their arms are just straight out. They're they're kind of just sitting in this neutral pose. Um, I took the purple Pikmin and I kind of gave him this kind of like what confused look of like oh you're giving an order oh okay I guess I'll go get that um, kind of confused looking guy. <laughs> 
So purple Pikmin are awesome. I love them. I love them in Smash Brothers. They equal death. So <laughs> purple Pikmin is in Alpha Olimar's hands. They they equal death. So I love them so much. I love Alpha and Olimar and Pikmin. They're such a unique fighting style, is because they're not really. You know they're they're elemental they're elemental fighters if you really think about it because they use their Pikmin to give you chi uh, chip damage and that that when when you take out a white or a purple Pikmin that's when you're in trouble because they they do extra damage so really really cool I love that about Pikmin I love that about the the Super Smash Brothers and how they how they fight how can you take a a, a character like this that's so tiny that's so frail how do you make him a threat how do you make him a, like a fighter and that's exactly what they did and I love it. And then you got his little bulb up here for the purple Pikmin. Oh, focus. There we go. I'll go back over here. Here is the white Pikmin. He's got his beady red eyes. And these I chose these two on purpose because I wanted it to make a counter of, of Olimar. So as you can see here, Olimar has the blue, the red, and the yellow Pikmin with him. So I figured, oh, what what, what better way? And this just kind of all fell in place because, once again, the, the 3D model itself of ALF... Um, comes from Super Smash Brothers for Wii U and 3DS, to where the the actual Pikmin itself is from Pikmin 3. Um, so when I took Alf's 3D model, he came as a T pose, but he also came with these bonus pink Pikmin, winged Pikmin, uh, that came detached to him. So I kind of just put him on his back, and it kind of printed as such. And then actually, my wife made these little fairy wings from. Uh, leftover of a wedding accessory or a, a wedding gift um, that we were giving to all of our um, all the people that came to our wedding um, a while back. It was like a fairy in a bottle kind of thing. So she just had extra wings, so we just stuck them on there, and then we printed flowers, uh, 3D printed flowers, uh, put them on there. Uh, the bulb is also 3D printed, and the leaf is actually um, 3D printed. Uh, and of course on the 3d printed base so it looks really good i like it a lot i know uh with the, once again with the lines and everything 3d printing is kind of one of that thing i need to really get better at and seeing about smoothing and everything like that but such a small figure because he is really small in comparison to something like mewtwo so really really small if he was a lot bigger i i think i could work with more of the helmet and the the lines part of it but because he was so small it was just a little bit of a challenge to do but i really wanted to get this guy done as fast as i could and as soon as i could uh because alf is one of those characters that just once again uh it, it's kind of weird and just like the koopa kids it's kind of weird that we have echo fighters that have separate slots or you can choose them to be together in the same slot like dark samus daisy etc and then you have things like alf which doesn't make any sense, or any of the Koopa Kids, I can understand more of the Koopa Kids because that would be seven extra slots in the character select screen for no reason. Alf is kind of weird that he's not an Echo Fighter. Now, being that some Echo Fighters really don't have a difference at all, certain Echo Fighters do, with Lucina and Marth, for an example, with Dark Pit and Pit, for an example, um, even things like, in, in terms of not necessarily even move sets or damage output with things like dark samus and samus where dark samus jumps up slightly higher than samus um and yet is an echo fighter alf doesn't get that at all and, and alf is a directly a copy paste of olimar there is no difference from it whatsoever but it, it just kind of is weird that alf did not get his own set of echo fighter um colors and olimar kept his own I don't know. It's just me. It's kind of me nitpicking. But the reason more me nitpicking more than anything else is that the fact that since Ol Alf is a costume swap of Olimar, Alf doesn't get an amiibo. <laughs> so here I am making an Alf amiibo because of that. And I really love it. And yeah. So there we are. And that is Alf. So there we are, folks. That was a look of, at ALF, my ALF custom amiibo, and some more custom amiibo that we have here in the background. Um, I think in about a week, we should be getting Steve and Alex, so these two should be active soon, so I can't wait to actually showcase these guys and Steve and Alex. It's going to be crazy. I also have another Alex amiibo, so um, I'm still contemplating what we're going to do with her, 
and seeing which costume she's going to be. But uh, thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I really do appreciate that. Thank you so much for the 50,000 folks. I really, really, really do appreciate all the support. I, I am trying not to break out in tears, <laughs> honestly. Um, it really is a big milestone. I, I really wouldn't have thought it would have been, you know, it would have been possible. But here we get, here we are. You know, and I really want to thank you all for doing this. You know, I really want to thank you all for your support. I really all want to thank you guys for being a part of this amazing community. And I'm going to keep going. You know, there are more custom amiibo that I'm going to do. There are plenty of other fights that are going out there. I want to say in the next uh, couple of days, I think Roy is finishing up his Versus the World. And we should be getting into Mr. Game & Watch soon. Which means we are 26 fighters in the Versus the World series, which means we will be starting our Super Smash Brothers Brawl characters pretty soon. Um, so thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate all of the support on here. I really do appreciate you checking us out. And for anybody that's new to the channel, uh, please check out the other content that we have available here. We have plenty of fights. We have plenty of tourneys. We have plenty of uh, uh, other Smash vlogs showing off other, other custom amiibo. Um, plenty of other amiibo highlights on here for you and more to come. So thank you very much, guys. Take care. Hope everybody stays safe and smash on.